In this video I show how to seamlessly extend images using Affinity Photo. If you've got an image that you would like to widen, maybe like this one with a nice brown dog, maybe you'd like to widen it so that it's a 16 by 9 ratio for instance, but you'd like to keep part of the image, in this case the dog, the same width, you don't want to stretch it. You just want a wider image with no distortion. The answer is to resize certain areas, so we'd resize this area over here and resize this area over here. This way the dog will remain in place and also be the same width. There are two ways of achieving this and both of them start by expanding the canvas. So we'll have a wider canvas to stretch the sides of the image into. We'll extend the sides of the image into the blank space in the wider canvas. We could expand the canvas by going into Document and Resize Canvas. The only problem with this method is that I'd like this to be 16 by 9 and I'd have to calculate the new width based on the current height, which is a little laborious, but luckily there's a better way. Let's cancel this and instead go to the Crop tool, like so, and first select your Crop Ratio. I'd like it to be 16 by 9. You set the ratio from this little drop down here. You just click on the little cog. This brings up the inbuilt ratios. I'll choose 16 by 9. Now I have a 16 by 9 guide for performing the crop. Now I'll move it into position. I'd like the left vertical rule of thirds line to be in the center of the dog's head, more or less. So I'll drag it roughly into position, like so. Then all I have to do is to stretch the sides out like so until it fills the canvas vertically. I may have to adjust the top and the bottom slightly, like so. And now I have a perfect 16 by 9 crop in the correct position. The dog is exactly where I want him to be and obviously I can still move the canvas around. But this is where I want it, so there we go. And once you're satisfied with the position of the crop, all you have to do is click apply. Now we have a wider canvas. We now have space on the canvas to fill with data from the background areas. An important point, when you load an image into Affinity Photo, the background of the image is locked by default, like so. Just to stop you accidentally messing with it. We have to manually unlock the layer using the little padlock right here, or here with the layer selected. This will actually allow you to edit the image to make changes to the image. It's actually one of the biggest mistakes people make. They forget to unlock the image and then they can't edit the image and they're sitting there scratching their heads wondering why. Okay, the next stage is to fill in the gaps at the side of the screen here with some data. We'll fill in the gaps with data from these areas here to make it look seamless like it's just one image. There are two basic methods to achieve this. One is to stretch this area here, make it larger and stretch it into the gap on the right. Now this will deform the image, the section that we stretch, but it should look fine in this case and also we'd stretch this area into this space on the left. That would create the required effect, stretching the edges. The second basic method we could use is to copy a portion, a rectangle of the graphic here, into the space on the right, and also from here, or maybe over here, into the space on the left. Both methods are perfectly valid and we're going to start with the stretch method. The first thing to do with the stretch method is to select the area to stretch. So let's select our rectangular marquee tool and then drag out over the area we wish to stretch. It automatically clips to the top and bottom edges of the screen. Now, if I'd like to resize the selection area without actually affecting the underlying image, 
then all I have to do is to press Q and then just select the move tool. Pressing Q brings you into quick mask mode which gives you access to control of the selection area. So now we can grab the handles and resize the selection like so. Move the selection closer to the dog on the left and then just a little bit further on the right like so to the edge. Then press Q again to exit quick mask. As I have my move tool selected if I move one of the handles it will stretch the selected area like so. So let's just stretch across. There we go. Stretch it just past the right edge and select my hand tool and deselect to get rid of the marching ants and there we have it. We've stretched this area into the gap. The only problem with this method is that it leaves a little line in the image. Seems to be a little bug or an undocumented feature in Affinity Photo. But there is a way to avoid the little line. So let's go back to the previous state before we did our stretch. Just Control Z a couple of times. Get back to where we've just got the selection and we haven't stretched it. We still have our selection so we'll select the move tool again. Now to get rid of this little line or to avoid it is really simple. All you have to do is on your keyboard press your left cursor key or press the opposite direction to the stretch direction. That will have moved the image data one pixel to the left. So when you come to perform your stretch the line is covered. So stretch it to the edge like so. Then let's just select the hand tool and get rid of the marching ants. And as you can see we've eliminated that single pixel gap. The trick is just to move the selected area one pixel in the opposite direction to the stretch. OK let's try this side. I'll grab my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to stretch this area into this space so I'll mark out my rectangle like so. Once I have the area marked out I'll grab my move tool. Now I'm not going to press Q to move the selection points around this time. I think they're absolutely fine. First I'm going to avoid the gap so press the right cursor key on my keyboard. As I'm going to be stretching left on the screen I'll press right on the keyboard just to move the data one pixel to the right before the stretch. Then stretch just past the left edge of the screen, select my move tool and deselect. And we're done. As you can see we now have a nice wide backdrop. And I think that looks very nice indeed. And not one person will notice that we've stretched the edges. Now this method only works with some images. It only works with images that are quite horizontal or are quite busy in the backdrop or very empty that sort of thing otherwise you will see the stretch. Now there is a variation on this method which totally bypasses the gap it doesn't happen at all which I will show you now. If we just press Control and Z a few times to reset back to the original image there we go just deselect OK, so first things first, select our rectangular marquee tool and mark out the selection area like so. Then I'll just press Q for quick mask and select the move tool and adjust the rectangle so it's correct. Press Q again to exit quick mask mode and I have my move tool selected to stretch. Now the variation to avoid the gap is to press Ctrl and C which will copy the area on the layer into the clipboard and then press Ctrl and V and what that does is to create a new layer with this section copied into it. Now with this new layer selected just perform the stretch. Just stretch to the edge as normal and if we just deselect select our hand tool and as you can see we've performed the stretch without the blank line. 
Now all we have to do is to right click on the layer and select merge down. And it's merged the stretched area into the underlying layer. And that's the alternate stretch method which avoids the gap. OK, let's take a look at method 2 which is the copy method. Here we are back to the resized canvas before the stretch. Select our rectangular marquee tool. The first thing to do is to select an area which is slightly larger than the area you'd like to fill. So it's slightly larger than this area here. Then press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to create a copy of this section that we have selected. Then all we have to do is to select our move tool and move this section over into the gap with the overlap here in this area. OK, that's moved into place, so let's just deselect. Now, as you can see, we have a seam. And my preferred method for getting rid of this seam is to use a mask. With our copied layer selected, click on the little mask icon here to attach a mask to the layer. Now, if we select our paintbrush tool and black, we can erase the seam. Set our paintbrush opacity to 100 and set the hardness to 0. And as you can see here, as I pass my brush over the seam, it will be erasing it. Black erases from the mask, making the portion see-through, allowing the image from the underlying level to show through. I'll just make my brush smaller using the left square bracket key. And then I'll paint from top to bottom all the way down the seam. And then I'll just go up and down the seam, wobbling about a little bit, just to make it a little less obvious. And as you can see, we have a seamless extension to the image without any stretching. It's a pretty effective method. I think it looks really nice. You could use either method, the stretch or the copy. It depends on the image. With a bit of experience and experimentation, you'll know instantly which method will work. OK, we have one more little job to do to complete this section, and that is to right-click on our copy layer here and select Merge Down. And now that section is merged into the background layer. While we're here, we may as well do the other side. First, select our rectangular marquee tool, mark out our section with some overlap, Press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to create a copy of the section in its own layer. Select the Move tool and move the section over the gap with the right edge of the section overlapping. And now we have it in position, our copied section in its own layer. We select our paintbrush tool, make sure our colour is black, make sure the layer is selected and create a layer mask. There it is, attached to the layer, which we can see here. Let's just deselect, and again using the black paintbrush, paint all the way down the seam. It doesn't want to be tidy. You want to create variation to make the seam seamless. And there we go, that's the left side done. We've now completely extended the image. Just right click on our layer and merge down. And there it is, an extended image using method 2, the copy method, without stretching.